morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Zoz and welcome to your detailed forecast update for the 1st of December 2024. First day of summer and we've got a lot to get through including heavy rainfall expected across much of central Queensland also into the southeast as well. Severe thunderstorms up in the far north and some heavy rainfall there too. Heavy rainfall across the Northern Territory and parts of Western Australia from a developing tropical low offshore from Western Australia and then much later in the forecast period a developing tropical low in the Gulf of of Carpentaria. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We've got a lot to get through today and the support lately has been much appreciated. But let's get stuck straight into things today across the south central parts of Queensland where we have had some heavy falls over the past 24 hours and with more rainfall on the way as well. Let's take a look at the forecast straight away. So we did immediately expect to be waking up to some heavy rainfall across the southeastern parts of Queensland throughout the course of this morning. Fortunately though, however, we haven't really seen that materialise on the uh, rainfall radar over the past 6 or 12 hours as I was really expecting but we have had some uh, decent falls here and there you can still see there is a little bit of rainfall around the southeastern corner of Queensland which is uh, good to see they do desperately need the rainfall down there or in some locations especially into the Gold Coast hinterland uh, and yeah that rainfall still continuing to pipe up in some areas the radar loop here doesn't really look like it wants to load in but you can see there were some heavy showers overnight and peak rainfall accumulations I would estimate just based off this image here between 20 and 40 millimeters also some good falls further out and towards nest and Toowoomba, some good storms out there. Again, nothing crazy, just a good amount of precipitation to really start off uh, Sunday and to start off December. We will see a round of thunderstorms later on this afternoon and evening outside of Brisbane and Maroochydore. We'll likely see some of them being severe, so we will keep a very close eye on things out there. Uh, Gold Coast as well could also see a couple of storms later on tonight. They'll be a little bit more hit and miss as you get further south, but yeah, like I said, firing up at around 3 or 4 p.m. right up the uh, southeastern Queensland coastline. Thunderstorms possible outside of Rockhampton, Agnes Border and Bundaberg and then severe thunderstorms extending between Bundaberg right down towards Toowoomba mostly concentrated further inland I mean we could take a look at the uh, convective forecast model here and just look at where the most intense rainfall clobs are going to be and like I said yeah just slightly inland further north of Brisbane we'll likely see a couple of stronger thunderstorms up there from about midday to about 2pm and then further outside of Harvey Bay and Bundaberg we'll likely see a round of stronger thunderstorms there but for the most part thunderstorms not looking to be too strong later on this afternoon and evening really nothing crazy nothing Nothing to write home about, but it's still an interesting thing, and I would not be surprised if there were some severe thunderstorms later on tonight into the southeastern corner of Queensland. Looking ahead in the forecast, at least for the southeast of Queensland into the northeast of New South Wales, it's looking pretty boring. I mean, there's not a whole lot to talk about and for the entire remainder of the week, to be honest. There will be a couple of storms coming through by the looks of things, maybe sometime on Thursday next week, at least further inland outside of Toowoomba and Warwick. Uh, and there could be a couple of storms as well on Friday around the thing, but more concentrate into the south central parts of Queensland but yeah I mean we're waiting right out into December 10 to see another round of thunderstorms into the southeast of Queensland this is really interesting stuff we had a rocker start to thunderstorm season in November just storms 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 and more storms across the southeast and then December just looks like it's going to be quiet into the middle parts of the month and that's not totally unusual even for this time of the year in the southeast of Queensland but still for thunderstorm lovers you're looking like it's going to be pretty disappointing for the remainder of uh, at least the first couple of weeks of December. Hopefully things pipe up a bit later on in December. Uh, but yeah, it really doesn't look like an awful lot is on the forecast at this time. In terms of rainfall accumulations, though, there is an awful lot of stuff coming through from next weekend onwards. We can take a look at this now, but I would preface this by saying that this week-long forecast here that I'm giving for rainfall accumulations, you need to take this with a very heavy pinch of salt. We're talking about rainfall accumulations a week into the future and of a tropical nature as well. And you can take a look at this up in central Queensland, accumulations up towards 250 millimetres. And what's driving that? Well, we're going to see a rainfall band develop from a about Monday onwards, developed from a monsoon trough that's going to be sitting across the Gulf of Carpentaria. So showers and storms look possible Monday and Tuesday into the south central parts of Queensland around Charleville and Roma, but then from Tuesday and Wednesday onwards, this rain band slowly creeps further north and it's going to be steady showers and rain tending to storms at times with some heavy falls possible throughout Wednesday, Thursday and then into Friday. We've got some more rainfall coming through Saturday and Sunday the 14th and 15th of December respectively, but I mean we're still looking two weeks into the future here and even though there is a little little bit of support between other forecast models uh, on this weather event, I would still like to say take this with a very, very heavy pinch of salt. This is a lot of rainfall to be calling a very ambitious forecast two weeks into the future, but again, much needed rainfall for this part of central Queensland. I mean, locations between Ogmore right down towards Bundaberg, they're still sitting uh, slightly below average in terms of rainfall, but it really feels like they've been bone dry and really left out compared to the remainder of Queensland, which has been drenched so far over the month of November. But I mean, take a look at this desperately needed 
needing this rainfall here. So it'd be very good if this does materialize, but like I said, take this one with a very heavy pinch of salt. The GFS forecast model is calling for some reasonable rain rainfall as well. I mean, up towards 100 millimeters, in fact, slightly more outside of Rolleston and then across towards Biloela and Bundaberg. So again, that's a really good thing to see on the forecast here. And this does tell me that there is the hot chance of this rainfall really materializing. Um, the GFS forecast model generally very reliable in forecasts out towards uh, even about a month. They can be very reliable indeed. Uh, the Eastern Probably not so much. So when the GFS says something like this, I tend to pay attention. Again, though, I would take this with a very heavy pinch of salt. We're looking at something 15 days into the future right now. So again, it is still a huge uncertainty on the forecast. And there will be major changes in this rainfall here when it does actually come to fruition. It's that time of the year, though, so it is not unlikely to happen. But we will keep a very close eye on the forecast. Now, moving up into to the central to the northern parts of Queensland. It's going to be a Queensland focused part of this video so I'm, I do apologize for that but you can skip around to what part of the video you want timestamps are in the description but up in the far north of Queensland we have the chance of some severe thunderstorms blowing up tonight. They look like they're actually uh, kind of recouping what they lost on yesterday's forecast. I mean take a look at this. Some strong stuff is expected up into the northern parts of the far north Queensland later on tonight across the Atherton Tablelands. Last night's round was pretty disappointing all things considered but I mean take a look at the convective forecast models here. It is looking like it is going to be quite interesting. Plenty of severe cells, uh, plenty of uh, strong cells rather that could go severe uh, for heavy rainfall and damaging winds. Large hailstones doesn't look entirely possible at this time but across the Atherton Tablelands expect slow moving pulse thunderstorms with a lot of precipitation in them. Hopefully Atherton, Raven, so and the communities around them get absolutely pumped with some of these thunderstorms. Also out towards Chilago and uh, Mount Carbine they get pumped with rainfall. They really do need it. They have had a couple of good drops over the last couple of days uh, but yeah th this rainfall is much needed to them and is going to be very important to them. Now rainfall accumulations on the convective models, I mean uh, this is why we don't use convective forecast models because they are notoriously inaccurate but uh, rainfall uh, forecasts over the coming couple of days, uh, Sunday and Monday when we do have a couple of thunderstorms coming through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday are looking pretty healthy. I mean 70, 80 millimetres they're not going to shy away from that especially when they got 20 or 30 millimetres yesterday which is another point. Let me know how much rainfall you guys get from this weather event here uh, from this thunderstorm outbreak. Cairns as well expecting about 50 millimetres, both Innisfail and Tully could see up towards 50 or 60 millimetres. We'll get to Innisfail and Tully in just a few moments as well. There's more on the forecast for them. And then further north outside of the Daintree, a couple of good storms out there could amount to 70 millimetres of rainfall. Even Cooktown expecting up towards 20 millimetres and some great falls onto the western side of the Cape York Peninsula between Weeper down towards Karumba. Great rainfall through an incredibly remote part of Queensland, but taking a look at this up towards 50 to 80 millimetres of rainfall this is really going to cause some problems for the roads, especially if we do get a couple of very heavy cells up there so make sure you are taking extra care on those roads stay up to date with the main roads website as well across Queensland because there will be road closures once this rainfall really does set in so like I said some good thunderstorms tonight some good thunderstorms tomorrow afternoon as well some storms still lingering on Tuesday but they will definitely weaken off storms also expected on Wednesday but outside of the far north Queensland area they're going to extend in towards the Cape York Peninsula so again we won't be uh, expecting too much rainfall there beyond about Tuesday afternoon we won't be expecting too much in the way of rainfall for north Queensland Thursday those thunderstorms kind of peter out but then we see an onshore flow begin to pipe up and throughout the course of uh, Thursday afternoon right through into Friday we're going to be seeing some showers light to moderate mostly but then turning heavy at times for locations between in, uh, Ingham right up towards Cairns and that includes Innisfail and Tully expecting some good showers here tending to storms at times also the Daintree rainforest around Port Douglas up towards Woodgill Woodgill some good falls also possible there Rainfall continuing through Friday and then into Saturday as well, easing off by Saturday and Sunday, and you can see throughout the early parts of next week, not too much in the way of rainfall is expected, but certainly is going to start to pipe up some of this rainfall here across the far north of Queensland. You can see the next part of the video lingering over here in the Gulf of Carpentaria, and I will get to that in just a moment. So yeah, just some steady rainfall across the far north of Queensland over the next two weeks. It's going to be on and off. I mean, we've got a bit of an on period from thunderstorms tonight and tomorrow night, and then a bit of an on period from an onshore flow throughout Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Then it goes dry for a little bit, and then later on next week, we could be seeing a couple of good drops of rainfall as well. But just take a look at this here. 14-day rainfall accumulation is now starting to look pretty healthy across parts of far northern Queensland. Just from showers and thunderstorms, it doesn't look like anything too intense on the forecast, apart from what's expected tonight. I mean, but it really does quickly add up. We're talking about accumulations towards 150, 160 millimetres, and then those accumulations continue to pile on. You can see outside of Tully accumulations up towards 190 millimetres here. And as we know with far north Queensland, the rain 
rainfall can completely blow out compared to the forecast. Obviously, there is major discrepancies between other forecast models between what's expected here. The GFS calling for pretty much a completely different rainfall accumulation. Still some good stuff for the far north of Queensland, but the rainfall event that we talked about a few minutes ago across central Queensland, although it is possible this time of the year, you got to take it with a very, very heavy pinch of salt. So we will wait and see what actually happens there. And I would like to shift my focus into the Gulf of Carpentaria. I promise this is the last Queensland focus part of the video. We're an Australian weather channel here, not a Queensland weather channel. But taking a look at the Gulf of Carpentaria, some interesting stuff expected to pipe up from Sunday the 8th of December onwards. Take a look at this. A tropical low north of Arnhem Land expected to spin itself up. Uh, it really takes its time to spin itself up, and it's more likely going to be a bit of a monsoonal low than a tropical low, but still dumping a lot of rainfall across parts of northern Queensland and the Northern Territory. We're just expected to be inundated across parts of Arnhem land and then into the northern territory as well throughout this tropical low as it makes its passage across the northern parts of the northern territory and once it gets itself closer to the gulf of carpentaria or over the gulf of carpentaria it's going to drive all of that rainfall into the northwestern corner of queensland north of mount isa between Karamba, burktown and gregory and they can get some strong rainfall accumulations throughout this time of the year and we're taking taking a look at this we're talking about three or four days of just re steady really heavy rainfall and it also penetrates deep into queensland as well down towards maxilton uh, Mount Isa, McKinley, uh, Cloncurry, Julia Creek, just to name a few communities as well, and even as far south as Longreach and Winton, that's also going to play a part in the rainfall that's going to pipe across central parts of Queensland into the later parts of next week. Certainly something that's worth keeping an eye on. Uh, the rainfall accumulations are not mind-blowing, but they certainly are some of the heaviest accumulations that I've seen over the last couple of uh, uh, months uh, across Australia just as a whole. But take a look at this from Monday onwards when this rainfall event is really going to start to pipe itself up. The accumulations look to be well in excess of 400 millimeters 30 up towards 500 millimeters like i said the heaviest falls that we have seen so far this wet season and completely plausible as well that steady rainfall really is going to uh, take its time to pile on uh, and over a couple of days those accumulations are really going to quite quickly rack themselves up we're going to keep it on the tropical cyclone theme as well because we do also have a tropical low expected to develop a couple of days earlier off the, uh, the coast of Western Australia and this is certainly something that's worth uh, talking about as well because this has been on the forecast, the GFS long range forecast for a very long time. So just take a look at this one here from Friday the 6th of December. We're going to see enhanced convection and thunderstorm activity and a bit of rotation beginning to pipe itself up offshore from the Kimberley region. Now this uh, storm as well takes its merry time to really develop here and you can see it doesn't fully begin to stew into a tropical until about Sunday or Monday the 8th or 9th of December respectively. Offshore from Broome and Western Australia as a whole you can see it does begin to very slowly spin up but it doesn't look like it has any interest of getting tropical cyclone status here. It really does take its time. It will definitely become a fully fledged tropical low as per this forecast here but a tropical cyclone I mean that's a very hard sell at this time. I'm talking about this not because it's going to become a severe tropical cyclone and absolutely pound Western Australia. I'm talking about this because of the rainfall that it's going to drive ashore. A lot of it is expected. So from Friday uh, the 6th of December right through to Friday the 13th of December here just over that week-long period some very heavy falls expected across the northern parts of the Kimberley region the majority of this falling on the first couple of days of this forecast mind you up to about 200 millimeters maybe slightly more the closer you get to the coastline as well broom expecting about 80 millimeters as well and then rainfall accumulations through Port Hedland right down towards Caratha, Roburn and even Exmouth will be lingering between 10 and 50 millimeters slightly wetter up towards Port Hedland as well in fact they're expecting closer to about 80 millimeters and just from storms that will fire up from the inflow bands further inland as well accumulations will be between sort of that 10 to 40 millimeter mark as well so looking pretty healthy all things considered certainly something very interesting and certainly something worth watching if this tropical low does track closer to the coastline the rainfall accumulations of course will be much higher so certainly something that i'm going to keep a very close eye on rainfall accumulations should be minimal considering the storm is expected to be quite weak and for the most part moving away from western australia but like i said if it does track closer to the coastline like the gfs forecast model is suggesting here it takes it pretty close to Exmouth. all things considered then those rainfall accumulations will blow out quite dramatically. But it's that time of the year. I mean, we're seeing a lot of tropical disturbances spin up on these forecast models. East and we've got that one offshore from Western Australia and then that one up here in the Gulf of Carpentaria. The GFS calling for one offshore from Exmouth, another one expected to form uh, over here later on the forecast period offshore from Western Australia and then that Gulf of Carpentaria one. So very interesting stuff here and also something expected to spin up in the Coral Sea if you're a follower of the GFS forecast model as well. I think the Coral Sea, though, just based off how this season is 
is going to play out. We're going to have to wait a couple more weeks until we see tropical cyclone spin-ups in the Coral Sea. But yes, yeah, certainly if you live in Western Australia, this one to keep an eye on the Gulf of Carpentaria as well. If that interests you, that's another one to keep an eye on. And that also is going to have a major impact on the Queensland rainfall situation as well. So certainly something that is worth keeping a close eye on at this time. Very interesting stuff indeed. But like I said, for the Coral Sea and the Queensland coast as a whole, it looks like tropical cyclones are going to be uh, few and far between over the next month or so. Good news for them. But if you are a cyclone lover, I imagine that is a little bit disappointing and a little bit hard to hear. In terms of other interesting stuff happening around Australia, well, there isn't an awful lot. We have had a couple of storms across the west uh, as well over the past kind of 24 hours. In fact, inland from... Um, Perth out towards sort of the Wheatbelt region. We've had some very good storms out there. It's been fantastic to see indeed. I saw them blow up as I was driving around yesterday afternoon on the Row Highway. Beautiful stuff over the hills. I mean, it was just textbook stuff uh, for thunderstorms. Uh, gorgeous. We really do have some impressive thunderstorms across in Western Australia. When they do blow up over the hills, they do look quite incredible indeed. Showers and thunderstorms, though, clearing out by tonight. A bit of a cold front might sweep through the southwest later on this afternoon and evening. A few showers are possible there. Uh, a couple of showers also possible into Monday morning and a few showers. In fact, the remainder of this week, it does look like a little bit of December summer rainfall that's going to be coming through here. Nothing crazy, very light from the tail ends of the cold front. We do actually get this pretty much every December. I've gone through my weather uh, logbook for the last couple of years, and we do basically get this kind of showery crap at the start of December pretty much every year. So interesting stuff. Certainly looks like it's going to be coming through this year as well in its typical fashion, and then those warm temperatures will return by around Friday or Saturday. Perfect weather for the beach next weekend as well. Great weather for the beach as well, pretty much for the entire of next week. Looks like we're going to move into a pretty dramatic hot spell by next Wednesday and Thursday. Interesting stuff indeed. Our first 40 degree day might be just around the corner for the southwest. We got it. We got very close to getting that first 40 degree day in November, but it does look like we're going to have to wait a little bit longer across the southwest as a whole. And then across into the southeastern parts of the nation as well, rainfall accumulations, nothing standing out either. They have had some great falls across Tasmania over the last couple of uh, days as well. In fact, accumulations amounted to over 100 millimetres, and I believe they have been off the forecast or, or off the uh, past 24 hours. Oh no, hang on, take a look at this. Down towards Friendly Beaches outside of St. Helens, 80 millimetres in the past 24 hours, 99 millimetres in St. Helens, and accumulations between 40 and 50 millimetres being pretty widespread, or 40 and 50 millimetres being pretty widespread. Hobart didn't pick up too much rainfall, but yeah, accumulations well above 50 millimetres for a wide swathe of uh, the east coast of Tasmania. Very good rainfall to see over the past 24 hours, and it is now beginning to clear out now. More showers expected across the west coast, though, but what's new for those locations? Hayways receive showers around this time of the year. And I would also just like to finish this off by saying a couple of thunderstorms look possible across parts of South Australia, not only tonight, but also in towards tomorrow uh, and into Wednesday as well. We might see a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak towards the end of this week as well across interior parts of South Australia and then that will drag those thunderstorms into New South Wales and Victoria by Friday and Saturday uh, and then it looks like we might have a bit of a thunderstorm outbreak on our hands for next week and across interior parts of New South Wales. So certainly something I'm going to keep a close eye on indeed. But this video has dragged on for long enough. If you have enjoyed it then please consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now and again I could not run this show without them so thank you so much to all of their support. The list does keep growing every week so it is much appreciated to see all of the support on the channel sponsors. But that is all for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.